Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Wheat School. Today I'm in Croughton, Ontario, catching up with University of Guelph, Ridgetown College professor and combine mechanic, TJ Pullman. TJ, how's it going? Great. Thanks for coming, Vern. Hey, uh, we are at the farm today, and uh, it is, you know, late June, and it's time to get the combine prep for winter wheat. Um, TJ, last year we did corn combine prep. Yeah. You know, what's the difference in prepping a combine for winter wheat? Okay, Burn. a couple of things we're going to look at. One, we're going to look at the knife on the head, get it all set up so it cuts the wheat. We're going to make the right concave selection, talk about rotor adjustments. We're going to look at cleaning shoe adjustments, and we're going to look at residue management. Awesome. Spreading at the full 40 feet or 30 feet or whatever the header width is. Yeah, and that's a big question I have uh, from Peter Johnson. Wheat Pete sent me down with some questions for TJ. So let's do a walk around, and then at the end, we're going to have you tackle some of Wheat Pete's questions. You ready for that? I'm ready for Wheat Pete. All right, we're going to start with the knife here. First thing I like to do is walk up with a trusty pair of vice grips, clamp it on a section, and wiggle it back and forth. What I'm looking for is how much knife movement I have. The knife runs in this section of guard here. As it wears, it's going to wear my guard down. The knife's going to get pushed back, and I'm going to decrease cutting efficiency. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm looking at my guards is I want to make sure the edges of the guard is still sharp, right here where the knife runs through. The knife is nothing more than a pair of scissors. If I've got a rounded edge or a gap in between the knife and the guard, it's not going to cut very well. If the guards are worn, replace them. I'm going to make sure my knife blades are good and sharp still and not missing. The other thing are our hold downs. I need to push that knife against the guard so I get a nice shear action between the knife and the guard. I take a 20 thou feeler gauge. I just go in and I should get a slight drag between the guard and the knife. If I don't, I take a wrench, I adjust it, away I go. One other thing to note on these drapers is there is a adjustment between the belt and the back of the knife guard here. If you can see, I've got a bit of bounce there. This one almost should be shimmed up. Wheat kernels are very small. If I get any knocked off, they can actually fall through this gap and down on the ground and be lost. Next up, we're going to look at the rotor here. We want small wire concaves installed for wheat. I've only ever run small wire concaves in wheat. I have no other recommendations. So we've got our threshing area in the front, our separating area in the back. I have a separator grate removed here. We run the essentially key stock grates in the back. I've never run any other grates. There are options out there. This is what we run. On the back of the rotor here, we have spiked rasp bars. If you can see this little spike there, we're hoping we're going to try them this year. Uh, they should grab that straw mat and help agitate it, twist it and turn it to give us more separation in wheat. When it comes to tough wheat, there's also something else we can adjust. There are veins on top of this rotor cage, and I can actually control how fast that crop movement goes through the rotor. So in hard threshing conditions, I can slow them veins down and straighten it out to slow that crop mat down to help give me more time for threshing and separating. One other thing, when we're talking about rotor loss, so rotor loss is any kernels out the back of the rotor. There's a couple of things we can do to uh, combat rotor loss. One, is it threshed loss or unthreshed loss? So thresh loss means we've got thresh kernels exiting the back of the rotor. That's going to be a different adjustment than if it was unthreshed loss. Unthreshed means we still have kernels in the head. Uh, unthreshed would be your white caps. So to combat thresh loss, so seeds going out the back of the rotor, we actually open the concave. So opening the concave is going to allow that straw mat to expand and some kernels to hopefully fall out and get into the cleaning shoe and not out the back of the combine. Rotor speed. Speed the rotor up will actually help thresh loss. Uh, the speed of the rotor gives us the centrifugal force to fling the seeds to the outside and out of the rotor. Um, and don't be afraid to... speed. I've run this rotor as high as 1150 RPMs and without grinding kernels. So don't be afraid to play around with rotor speed. 
Secondly, when you are making concave adjustments, uh, they're in millimeters. So the factory setting is 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters of concave gap. When you're making adjustment, go five to 10 millimeters at a time. Moving from 10 to 11 millimeters is so minute of a difference, you're not even gonna notice it in the cab. So if you're at 10, try 15, try 20. I've gone to 30 millimeters with wheat. As long as you've got that rotor full and it's doing a good job, the more open the concave is, the less crop damage I'm gonna get. If we've done what we can and we're still getting rotor loss with threshed crop, you have the option to install these flat bars. You can install two to four flat bars. These will essentially obliterate the straw and do a really good job at separating. They consume an awful lot of horsepower if you're gonna install them. And if you're worried about straw quality, do not have flat bars or those spiked bars in there. They will destroy your straw quality. I also want to talk about unthreshed loss. When we're dealing with unthreshed loss, I need to increase my threshing aggressiveness. So what I usually start with rotor, speed the rotor up. Speeding the rotor up increases threshing action, may fix my problem. The last thing I will do, um, close the concave up until I'm getting my kernels completely threshed. I may play around with my cage veins again, slow them down, keep that crop in there longer. Okay, looking around back here at the cleaning shoe, we've got the pre-sieve in the front there. We have the top sieve here under my hand and below it is the bottom sieve. So we start at the pre-sieve. The book calls for 10 millimeters of opening on the pre-sieve. That is way too much. Anything through the pre-sieve goes right into the clean grain auger. I usually run that depending on yield, uh, test weight, the year, dry wheat versus a little wet wheat. I five millimeters maybe, down to three sometimes. What you'll notice is you'll be getting a lot of trash in the bin and it could actually just be coming through the pre-sieve. If you close it all the way up though, we lose that initial air blast from the fan that levitates all that chaff and blows it out the back. So you want to find a happy medium with that. When it comes to the bottom sieve, the book was eight millimeters. That's, you know, uh, a great starting point. I've run them as closed as three millimeters before. What I find when it comes to white caps, if I've got a few white caps in the bin, I will close the bottom sieve to try to get them white caps into the tailing system and re-threshed. The top sieve, uh, 15 millimeters is a great starting point, same thing. If I'm getting a lot of garbage in my tailings, so thresh material, straw, heads that have been threshed, my top sieve is open too far, I want to close it up a touch. This top sieve actually is a long finger sieve or a deep tooth sieve. It is not that uncommon that I have to run this tighter than what the book says than if I had a shorter tooth. A kernel of wheat is very small, it does not need a big hole to fall through. So I take the book kind of with a grain of salt sometimes when it comes to the cleaning shoe. Air, when it comes to fan speed, if I do not have enough fan, I will plug the fan itself. I will plug the tailing system. I just, I don't levitate enough of that chaff or straw mat to get it out the back. I do like to run a lot of fan. When it comes to wheat kernels, same thing, very small, too much fan can actually blow them out the back of the combine. Um, same thing, find a happy medium, the starting point is 1050 RPM on the fan. I've gone as high as 1250 before. It all comes down to the year and crop conditions and things like that. Uh, same thing in the morning, I might run a different fan speed than in the afternoon. I'm always tweaking my cleaning shoe to try to keep the, my bin sample beautiful, um, but don't be afraid to play around with these settings. One last thing, and it, it deals to shoe loss. So our loss sensor is this pad here. Most times when I see shoe loss in the cab, it's coming from the rotor. So as that crop mat leaves that chopper up there, the kernels are heavier and they will actually fall down and hit the back of the shoe and trigger the shoe loss alarm in the cab. So just because I've got stuff or kernels falling out of my cleaning shoe doesn't necessarily mean the problem is with my cleaning shoe. You could have a rotor loss problem and most of the time that's what it is. All right, here at the back of the combine, at the back of our rotor, we have our straw chopper. 
Here on the farm, we're not worried about straw quality. I want my straw incinerated and spread a full 40 feet. So part of that is I have to have my stationary knives up so that I'm chewing up and destroying that straw before it gets to my tailboard spreader here. There are a variety of adjustments we can do here. These side sheets will telescope in and out. That will affect our width or on windy days, I can adjust them depending on the wind condition so I still get my full spread. There are two paddles up inside here, spinners. I can control the speed of them from the cab. So as I've lifted it up here so we can get in there and get a better look of these adjustments, I'll take you around to the side here. These paddles here are my spinners. I can control the speed of them from the cab. But there's a baffle here that raises up and down here. As I close this gap here, I will spread more straw to the outside. If I open that gap, it will drop more straw in the middle. So we're after a happy medium to get it to spread the full width evenly. And a half a turn makes all the difference in the world here. The other adjustment is the density. I can control how my, the density of my width of spread. And it's done from this side, which probably. So on the outside of my spreaders, I can adjust this more open or closed on this baffle each side to control the density of my spread. As I open it up, it's going to be more dense and less dense on the outside. As I close it, most of the density is going to go to the outside. Same thing, you got to find a happy medium. It does take a little time to set the spreader up, but once it is set up, it works amazing. So TJ, great walk around the combine, lots to learn there. Hey, let's start on uh, Wheat Pete's questions. The first thing he had was, you know, how do we manage green straw, especially early in harvest? Yeah, well, Wheat Pete, the first rule of combining is make sure that the crop is fit. If the crop is fit, we don't have any green straw. However, I'm as guilty as the next person pushing the envelope when it comes to early harvest as wheat quality matters. Yeah. If we're dealing with green straw, uh, more open concave and rotor speed. Yeah. And green straw will take horsepower. Talk about, I guess, maintaining that full width of straw spread, especially as conditions change during the day. Yes. So, and it's uh, early in the morning. Often I have to close my concave up a little bit when we start. The wheat's tough. Um, and then as the afternoon goes on, I can change, do some rotor settings changes to get maximum throughput. Um, in the afternoon, it's going to chew that straw up a little more. We might have to change spreader speed. I might have to get out and make an adjustment on my side shoots. Um, but we're talking small. I get out to 30 seconds, 10 seconds, make an adjustment. I can adjust the spreader speed from the cab. I mean, we've got this beautiful combine. I got good mirrors. I can see behind me. Am I spreading the full width? I can push a button and speed up or slow down my spreader to maintain that. Awesome. Pete wants to know, how do we avoid smash kernels? Ah, smash kernels are caused by too tight of concave or rotor speed. Too much rotor speed. So I always screw with my concave first. Open the concave up if you're smashing. That's going to decrease how aggressive we are. Make sure that rotor is full. If the rotor is not full, we're not going to get that crop on crop action. And we may actually start damaging kernels. Yeah. Final question from Pete. How do we get white caps out? Oh, white caps. So if the crops fit, there will be little white caps. White caps can be variety specific. Right. Um, but mostly when it comes to white caps. So we're under threshing. We're not being aggressive enough as the threshing. So rotor speed. Concave adjustment. I like to run my concave open and my rotor fast to get as much crop in there as possible. If it's only a few white caps, I will close my bottom sieve down and try to bounce them into tailings right. and hopefully get threshed out in tailings. Final thought from Pete. He, uh, he always gets upset when you got to stop the combine and get updates. Um, he says you got to have them done now. What, <laughs> what about this combine? Well, so this actually went into Delta this winter and had the software updated, so we are good to go. The problem with the dealers is they're very busy this time of year, and to come out and do a software update, they often 
often enough don't have the time as we're kind of in a crunch season, crunch time here. Yeah. But get them done as soon as possible. Yep. And don't wait until you're rolling in the field, right? Yeah. Awesome. Last minute. Last minute. Um, TJ, always great to have you on the Weed School. Hey, thanks for taking time today. Great. Thanks for coming. <laughs>